And we're pleased to have with us on the Tigers Media Network tonight, Jeremy Warner of the Jeremy Warner Show on ESPN Radio 93.5. Jeremy, thank you for uh, for swinging by and, and chatting with us here at halftime. Thanks, Joey, for having me. I appreciate oh, it. No problem. So uh, I want to talk a little bit first about your transition from the Tay and Jay Show mm -hmm. on uh, weekday afternoons to the Jeremy Warner Show on weekday mornings on, on ESPN Radio. What's that been like? Uh, obviously, the Tay and Jay Show, very popular. What's it like kind of... Forging your own path here. Yeah, it, it was bittersweet, but, uh, you know, Lon and I had a great thing going for seven years, and we had a great show, and I really had fun with him every day. Uh, it wasn't about that, though. It was for me. It was about my personal life. I just had a baby boy. He's about a year old, so I get to spend more time with him, have my afternoons and, and uh, nights a little bit more open uh, so I could be around my family a little bit more. But it's going well. The transition, it's different. Being a solo show, you kind of got to drive everything, Yeah. Uh, kind of have a conversation with yourself, have some interaction with our listeners though Austin Burkle my producer does a really good job doing that too so it's been a transition it's been bittersweet but I think we're off on the right foot and the great thing is now people have two shows they can listen to on ESPN definitely and I recall I think it was the last episode of the Tay and Jay show or, or uh, one of the ones thereafter where you've been a, a guest um, you mentioned you're a morning person and I imagine doing your show in the mornings you're, you're already up and at it so right well when you have a one-year-old you're going to be up early in the oh. morning anyway so no but I've uh, always been a morning person I'm chipper and I always wanted to give people you know that night after the morning after a game give them some instant reaction i feel like that there was a need in this area that we kind of can fulfill now so breaking down the games we also want to have some fun like right. carp and i were chatting music the other day so uh, we like to have a little bit of fun but we do want to be your in-depth sports breakdown definitely and it's a different it's a different perspective you can give early in the morning because you know stuff happens after the conclusion right. of now the, the tay and carp show so it you know it, uh, it's different. So yeah, yeah, definitely. you can you can recap the nights. And, and you know, sometimes waiting until 3 o'clock was difficult for me uh, to get all those <laughs> yeah. thoughts out. Now I can get them out right in the morning, and then you got a full day to kind of recap and uh, kind of break down what happened that night. Definitely. Now what we've seen tonight here, uh, Urbana versus Peoria, Karan Taylor, uh, Illini commit for next year, he has had a monster first half, obviously made a, a big play where he broke just several tackles, ran, you know, 60-plus yards into the end zone. What are the uh, what are the line I looking forward to him in, in next year? Well, Garrick McGee, the offensive coordinator, was here, and uh, Karan broke the, a couple tackles, a sack, ran for a 61 you know, touchdown. He said, "We should probably recruit that guy." <laughs> yeah, he's pretty uh, good. Karan Taylor's really yeah. good, uh, right. and he's got some receivers that are dropping passes on him tonight. So his stat line for passing might not look that great, but he's making big time passes. Uh, his receivers just aren't hauling him in. He's a he's a ridiculous talent. He's a power five talent. Illinois locked him up early, getting the in-state kid, one of the top quarterbacks in the state of Illinois. Uh, he can throw it. He can run it. Uh, he's, he's growing as an accurate passer, and you can see he's got command of his team as well. Oh, he's, got a, he's got an it factor to him. You know, right. Some kids, you, you see him in a camp setting like Karan, and he might not be as good as some more polished kids. When it comes, the lights come on, Karan Taylor makes his biggest plays, and you saw that in the state championship games last year. That he does, obviously, Peoria, the defending state champions in Illinois. And Peoria is a bit of a pipeline for the Illini. He's not going to be the only Lion on the on the team next year. Uh, some players that came before him are now on the Illini, and, and that's got to help, you know, knowing that he's got some buddies on the team. Yeah, Kendrick Green, the defensive tackle, freshman, not playing yet, but ridiculous talent, a four-star on scout.com. Illinois got him over Iowa, Notre Dame, some other schools came around. He's going to be a special defensive tackle, also played offensive line for Peoria. So, yeah, they want to get that Peoria thing going. If there's a, if there's a talented kid, a Big Ten kid in central Illinois, Illinois needs to lock him up, and it's been a good job uh, doing that with Kendrick and Karan. Right, Lovey's done a pretty good job. He's got a very young team this year, yep. and you know he's some recruits coming in next year. But the next few years, definitely with the classes he's got and the coach he is. It, it yeah, I mean, they're getting more talent. It's going to take time. I, I, this year should be a struggle. Everyone's got to remember this is basically year one. A lot of freshmen on this team, mm -hmm. they'll eventually be juniors. They'll yeah. eventually be seniors. And if they stack classes like this one, uh, they're going to be pretty good in a couple years. Definitely. The Illinois uh, the Illini play Western Kentucky tomorrow night. Uh, what can we expect on the on the gridiron at Memorial Stadium? It's uh, I don't think they're favored. Western no. Kentucky is. Uh you know, they're, they're coming in hungry, but what can we expect? Seven and a half point underdogs to a team that's never won against the Big Ten opponent. But this is an opponent that's won 22 games the last two years, won back-to-back -back Conference USA championships. Now, they have a new coach. Jeff Brom left to go to Purdue, and uh, Mike Sanford, the Notre Dame offense coordinator, comes in. I think that's an opportunity for Illinois. Western Kentucky wasn't great week one, but this is an experienced team that knows how to win with an experienced quarterback who can make plays. They're better than Ball State, and Illinois barely beat Ball State right. at home. So this is going to be a tough 
tough game for Illinois. They got to make strides. Everyone always says week one to week two is the biggest improvement. Illinois needs that to happen. The, uh, the young kids have to learn from that week one experience. Definitely. And it'll be a fun atmosphere at Memorial Stadium under the lights. Obviously, that changes things. Um, it'll be a fun one. Yeah, and it's a, bit, so. it's a big game for their season. I mean, if they want if they want a bowl game, <laughs> it's a game you got to win. I don't expect a bowl game. But I still think that Illinois, a Big Ten team, needs to beat Western Kentucky at home. Uh, this would be a nice win to help gain some confidence. If they lose this, there's not a lot of winnable games uh, right. on the schedule. Because that Big Ten is rough. Yeah. You know, it's a, and you write for IlliniInquire.com. That's yeah. one of the places that, uh, that people can find you. Yeah, yeah, right there covering recruiting, obviously, with Karan. Yep. Cover that guy, Illinois football. Derek Piper does a heck of a job covering basketball, too. Great. Well, uh, Jeremy Warner joins us on the Tigers Media Network. You can listen to him on ESPN Radio 93.5 weekday mornings, 9 to 11. And, uh, Jeremy, just thanks again so much for, for joining us on the, on the, on the program. Yeah, Joey, thanks for having me. No problem. Great thing you guys are doing. Yeah.